sa vie à haut de crasse. Hello and welcome back to the EGL Spring Series. I'm Shersey One, joined by Jimbo. Jim, this is Losers Round 2. Dave's adopted son up against late bloomers. It's going to be a good one. Oh yeah, for sure. And Dave's adopted son, second seed. You know, finished second last tournament. They found themselves in the losers bracket round two in the finals. They're definitely not where they want to be, so they're really going to have to clutch up to uh, represent the highest seed that they have. Yeah, and you're, you're talking about seeds. Late bloomers, only tons that here. So now they were actually eighth seed coming into this, and they've already made top six, so they've made a little bit of a few strides here. Oh yeah, definitely clutching up. I, I always, I honestly thought these guys would do a lot better for other weeks anyway. So the fact that eighth seed going to this is kind of like a, I didn't expect them to be in that position. So I think being in the top six is more so where I'd expect them to be. So sadly, I think they might be the team that's going to lose out in this battle right now. But again, you, you never know with these two v twos. Yep, and of course, looking at the best of three, it's going to be Plaza up first, Truth, game two, and Regret will be our final game, please, if we do need it. But let's talk about Shiesty and Sanity. They've had a really good run, a co good couple of close games, and Divine Mind on the opposite side, um, who, you know, for, they were second seed coming into this game, and they've dropped a couple of games already, albeit it was to, um, to miss that Marine, but they have a second bite of the cherry here, and as long as they can mentally reset, they can get themselves back in the mixer. Yeah, that's what I love about, you know, the fact that this finals is, okay, yes, all these previous weeks have happened and we've seen all these previous results and you have the seeding going to this one, but this is the one that really matters and it shows the true colours under the pressure of these teams and, you know, the, some of the seeds and the teams that are in positions they're in are not actually getting to where they should be or, you know, haven't uh, yeah. gone through the bracket the way they should be. So it makes it that much better when we see these different games and hopefully we don't see Shiesty miss this overshield. Just in the last map that we saw these guys, he dipped it and missed it. So I have uh... a lag spike. He got it! He got it! <laughs> he got it! And Shiesty goes through time, goes into the void, and somehow manages to get the overshield into his chest. No kills on the board as to just now. But here's now his position top middle, and we see Undy Tons out on the light rifle. Now Shiesty's in a 1v2, a little perilous position right off the bat. But he's got snipe rifle, he's got overshield, choosing to back down here, wait for his teammate to spawn up. But I'm not angry with that. Yeah, I think that's a good decision, but he needs to make sure he hits the first person. Like we always say, this overshield is slowly decaying, and he should be hitting this guy. It doesn't know where it is, doesn't know where he is, but you know he has a bit that overshield. He has that one shot advantage kind of at this point, and he's got a sniper. So I'd like to see a bit more aggression from him. The second he finds out a player, but unfortunately misses that and just gets out. You know, out teamwork right there. His teammate's too far back. He's in vulnerable position and dies with that sniper. So Sanard immediately realizing he's in danger, tries to get himself out of dodge, waiting for Shiesty to spawn back up, but. Here's the now Undy Tons, a decent little start considering they, they lost the overshield battle, they lost the sniper rifle battle as well. Now within two, it's now all tied up at two to two as Sanart does get that pummel onto Undy Tons. But a decent start and your eighth seed coming into this, you've already gotten you know pretty far and you're saying you know they think that it might just fall off here, but they're giving as good as they're getting in the early stages. Oh yeah, even though they are eighth seed and they're uh, you know they're in the top six position, they still deserve to be at this point. From based on their results, and even then, like I said, I expect them to. Do, I expect them to do really well in this series, and there is a chance they could upset here. But just based on the previous week, Sana and Chelsea should take that the upper hand. But uh, yeah, we've got a great start from the, the, the beginning, up by two kills. About to maybe make it three kills if they uh, isolate Sana down here on S1, uh, which they should be a lot quicker on doing. Sana bring up a big kill in a one v two situation. I don't think that should really happen. That's very slow push from the boys on late bloomers. But if Sana walks away with this, like, what a trade! Yeah, I have to say it's a really mi it's a misplay on behalf of late bloomers. You didn't see, need, here like basically here's now didn't need to drop down there and take that death. Put a couple of shots in, back down, and let your teammate clean it up. It's fundamental to Halo here, Jim. As we're going to see another overshield. Yeah, they just have to be quicker. You know, like they're in a one, they're in a two v one situation. They have full height over the player, and they just need to hunt him down. Just be quick and hunt him down. But it looked like it was like a we push up to top mid and then end up dying on it. As Sanar just grabs his overshield and look how quick. This is what I'm saying is look how quick Tracy and Sanar are pushing this. They killed one player, they find the second player, they hunt him down, they pressure him, and they're gonna do the same again. They've killed one player, they have an overshield, they have a new sniper, they're gonna hunt down the second respawner, which happens to be Andy Tonzo at this point, and Sanat pushed him for a 1v1. 
might even walk away with a 1v2 right now. Like that aggression from Sanart, really using, utilizing that overshield and Shice has gotten the sniper rifle as well. Positioned around the yellow ledge, he's just back down. Great players from him, Sanart gets that clean up and that's exactly what we were talking about, that bait and switch. Wait for your teammate to come in after you do the initial damage or that initial distraction. And there we go, Sanart get, picks up another couple of kills. He's playing really well off the start. Yeah, and it seems like this is a common thing for the boys on David's Object Sun is Shiesty kind of seems like this huge bait. He would put himself in these positions, these positions right up in front of the enemy, and he does so well at surviving. Just so long enough so Sanak can come in and get the kills, and it, that seems like it's a common thing. You see in that situation then, Shiesty was first initiation on gold uh, to the player in Yard. Maybe got made one shot, drop back down, kind of just stalled his life for the, for the respawner, and then let Sanak get the first kill, and then rotate and get the second kill. It was a big uh, beatdown right there from Andy Tons to see if he can walk away from the situation. In a 1v1 with Shiesty on garbage truck. A couple of shots go down either side. The trading shot block for blow. But now he's lost them in the clouds as only tons. And Shiesty with some top level movement there. Really breaks the angles of only tons. And gets that kill up by five now. Overshield not to be for another 30 or 40 seconds. But the first two overshields of the game have gone towards Dave's adopted son. That needs to be better. It needs to be corrected if you're late bloomers. Oh yeah, for sure. This overshield can definitely bring them back in. And just to get back to the previous play right there with the Shiesty 1v1. I like how Shiesty prioritizes the height control. You'll see this with a lot of top players. This height control is what they'll maintain in these kind of battles. Being down low is so punishable. Like you can see here, Shiesty is just completely covering Sana above him uh, with this height. And you know, that's the one thing that you should try and maintain. You can kind of pay attention to it in a lot of plays. There's a... Oh. What the? He missed it. I think he missed that pickup. That's a big choke right there from uh, his, is it his to now. Who's this on S4? I have no idea what's going on. Here's to now walked over the overshield and it slipped out of his hands. I don't know where it had been greased up from, from beforehand, but he didn't pick it up and he looked as, almost as confused as we were, Jim, as he spun around and went, wait, whoa. It was almost a Metal Gear Solid sound with the exclamation point, huh? The overshield <laughs> was no longer in his chest and now they're down by almost double the kills. They're in big trouble. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's a. It was definitely a win good. It gets me worried in this kind of situations because, like, you see an overshield and you kind of lose the player when you've got overshield in Sanal's perspective right there, and you just worry you're going to get back smacked or injured because you, you know, no radar in these settings. You can't follow where the players on the radar. And I like this play from Sanal. It just gives up in his one v one and helps Shiesty on his one v one outside of the map. Makes this uh, makes Andy Tonza kind of an irrelevant player right now and goes for the big one v one and a great win from him. Down by eight kills now, Jim. What? Can late bloomers do to get themselves back in the game? Down by a considerable margin, of course. If things go their way, another overshield that they've lost back to back to back overshields, another sniper rifle in the hands of Shy. They're really losing out on those pivotal 1v1s when the power ups and power weapons come up. Yeah, definitely. I think in this situation, I'd like them to play it slow. I kind of like how they play it slow. Uh, unfortunately, gets picked off by Shiesty. Good, uh, good position by that by Shiesty. But they need to play it slow. Great oh. nose scope right there. Shiesty letting them know. Old man Shiesty, he's still got. What he needs to do, still got the wiggles in him, still got the moves. You say old Grey Mary ain't much he used to be. Well, Big Dave, he is what he used to be. Great shots from him, 19 to 9, extends that lead to 10 now. Sanart in a 1v2 momentarily, but every single time they have the numbers advantage, late bloomers, they're, they're losing the fight. Yeah, they, at no point should Sanar get a trade in that situation right there. It's both of the the boys on, on late bloomer pushed the 2v1 situation and they walked away like losing that situation that should not happen and this is so hard to counter right try to see you're here with a light rifle putting so much damage down having sana in their face to do it which a big 1v1 right there from his to now and this could be the switch they need okay one death right there but that overshield's coming up soon i hope his to now recognizes that and grabs that and this is their chance of a comeback it's a big comeback 10 kills down when david's son only need three more kills but it can be done overshield has gone into here's so now's chest and there's his stats from last week, he was really impressive throughout. Of course, didn't have his form, his teammate of, of here of uh, only tons, excuse me, as he had a little bit of grown up stuff to do, work to be done. He's gotten a couple of kills now, as here's now, but is it a little bit too a little too late? As they only need, they only can only play with two deaths here, and they're they're eliminated from uh, game one. Yeah, it seems like it's very much too late. You can just kind of see in the in the map presence and the map style of these. You can kind of tell, like, you can see why the result is the way it is. You know, here's to now with the overshield, was super hesitant, didn't want to check any corners. He's still hesitant now, which is understandable one kill left, but he's, he doesn't seem like he has much of a game plan. He's kind of just hitting stuff and moving forward. And he does have a killing spree, but it's maybe too late. With only one kill required for Dave's adopted son to take the series lead, as Undi Tonza gets a kill, but it might be just out of anger as Sanard thrusts, stabilizes out the window, hits a couple of shots, and takes here's and now to the respawn screen but of course he will not be respawning but 
Jim, let's talk about it, okay? Plaza is one of those maps where there's, there's so many different angles, and you get into a 1v2 situation like Sanard found himself in a couple of times, but he was able to angle himself to make those 1v2s more 1v1s because you've seen late bloomers playing a little bit too slow. Is that something that needs to be changed, or is that the way Plaza can go sometimes? Maybe you're that, a little bit off the pace, that can happen to you. Plaza is such an easy map to dip and kind of like duck out of it. You know, quite often you're isolating players inside a yard and you can kind of go gold, you know, jump down to flowers or jump down to LR, jump down to driveway. There's so many different like positions to be made weak and kind of easily dip out and get your shields back. So I think Sana and Shiesty are very good at doing that, which is why they walked away with it. And if we look at the stats uh, just in a moment, you can see accuracy is actually pretty low, but Sana with, you know, a lot more damage than anyone else as we've... Uh, a cross man's choking and backed itself to the main lobby. Uh, if we see the Sanat actually had, I think it was like 800 more damage than anyone else in the lobby. So you can see Sanat definitely doing very, very well. Yeah, we're going to have to take your word for it, Jim, because we're going to have to fire Admin Crossman, who's had an absolute mare there. We said, let's take a look at the stats, and he's decided to back himself out. So the player's looking to restart the server. But up next, we've got Truth with the way that first game went over Shield, power weapons, time after time going towards dave's adopted son late bloomers need to change that right now yeah the start's going to mean everything for them right if they grab this camo off the start you know maybe at the minimum walk over two for one trade right there and you have camo and the map momentum in your in your favor right there so this camo means everything although shiesty and senna have been on top of these power-ups in the previous series and even in the map just we've seen then they're always on it they're always there unless there's was, there was one situation where they weren't which is when they lost down their trades so it's going to be definitely hard for them but camo is definitely the way into this so the start game in that last game, we've seen, you know, late bloomers. They were in touch and distance. They kept it nice and close. But towards that mid and late game, that's when we really started to see Dave's adopted son push, push the pace of the game, pick up those power weapons, pick up those power ups, and really start to dictate the pace of the game. Is that something that late bloomers can do now? It's got, of course, there's no sniper rifle to contend with here, Jim. It's just camouflage. And if they can keep themselves in it early doors, they might be able to push on. Yeah, it, it, I feel it's a common thing in Halo in general. What, what, what Halo you're playing is the first you know, half of the game is usually the teams getting to figure out how their opponents play, how they want to play the map, and and you know, kind of just getting into the habits. And then you see in the second half of the game is usually a massive lead happens to one team. It's because they've understood the play style of their opponents on this specific map. That seems like it's a common thing in 4v4s. It's a common thing in 2v2s as we're seeing. So you know, if, if you kind of hold it even for this the first half of the game, grab that camo around the four minutes, you know, four minutes into the game mark, they can get a huge lead off that. So I am looking forward to seeing that happen. And any team can do that. So it's, as long as they maintain control and keep that aggression up. Well, something we've seen in the EGL Spring Series in the doubles format is that teams not always utilizing that camouflage as best they possibly can. A lot of misplays being used, firing when possibly a patience is required. As we see Shiesty's position top middle, Sanner gets that 1v2 kill, of course, with the help of Shiesty, who made that who made Undi tons a week. But that's a fantastic start. But on the flip side of that, late bloomer is not what you wanted. Yeah, not where you want to be. They did get at the minimum, they did burn that camo out of there. So maybe that was a bit of a desperate play for the camo. That maybe, I believe it was Andy Tonta with the burn. Thought he was going to die, so he just went for that burn. And now they're isolated on this car side. And I like this. They just isolated and removed Shiesty from that and, and double team Sana on the kill. And I like to see him be aggressive right here. I like this from Andy Tonta. Be aggressive. The opponent's weak. And keep this aggression up. Find where Sana's just spawned. Push him as a two. Uh, be quick on it, though, before Shiesty can respawn. But it looks like they're not going to do that. It looks like they don't actually know where this player has spawned and they're kind of just checking their corners, which you can't be doing. All tied up, two to two, checking their corners, although they got two people dead, so they shouldn't be spawning anywhere close to them. So maybe just a lack of ma map knowledge there, not knowing the spawns as best as maybe some of these other players do, but all tied up here is now in a 1v1, and he gets a trade. It's not too bad, but Shiesty Lurkin would have got that clean up anyway. So a good play from here is now to get that trade. Four kills to four, the score. We're going to see a camouflage another minute or so, but not a bad start. Late bloomer starting to grow into it. Yeah, even game. Uh, you know, Sanat currently has all the kills for his team, so he's definitely going out. But going back like who before, right? He killed. They killed both players. Both players on car, and because both of them were down car one, they didn't really have much map presence. So it's kind of hard to predict where your opponent's going to spawn because the P spawn's not really that regular. So they took a gamble. They pushed blue. Thought the player was there. He wasn't. He actually spawned red P street and went back into red in that situation. So Shiesty stuck down P1 here. Like I said, Cameron about 30 seconds. I like this isolated play, but they're not pushing. They're just not hitting him too hard. Shiesty's just dancing around the pillar and playing his life. Shiesty. We talked about it on Plaza. Shiesty in their play style is what you said, Jim. B. And that's exactly what we just seen. Yeah, it... it Sana literally has just got to wait and wait for Shiesty to initiate and then just come in with a flank. That seems like it's a common thing. And you can see it here again, Shiesty's playing very aggressive. He's tracking these players and he's on the hunt right now. And Sana is actually the first point of initiation, but Shiesty's made one player weak and 
it's you know just being a nuisance down this basement, making them have to worry about him. So we've just seen here, so now drop off towards that P Street to get that clean up. Only Tonza, but a fantastic five on the shiesty, winning that, winning that fight when really he had no right to. But I have to question here, so now was dropping down and trying to get that kill, knowing that the player position below him. It's an interesting play. It's definitely a hard situation because the reason why they challenged so hard is Sana was actually on that camouflage. Now, they did actually end up killing Sana again, which is a good trade in that perspective. But yes, they had to sacrifice their lives, and it's a great perfect fight that from here's the number. That's the reason why they overextended that, because they knew they had to contest that camo. And both of them being in the same position, they kind of have to force it very heavy, which obviously bad position from there from the get-go. Like, someone should be on the window in that situation and fly up on mid and kind of separating. They also look at the same angle, but they both push the piece through. And like I said, at the minimum, got the burner, Sanar gets the kill, and he's already shooting bodies. Every time we see Sanard in a position where he's in a 1v1 or 1v1v2, he's coming out on top more often than not. And what is he doing, Jim, that, you know, maybe late bloomers just cannot shut down as again, he wins another 1v1 with a fresh five. He's just not missing. You see that? He just got a five shot and he's always looking. He like, see, even now he's like aware of where his teammates, uh, the opponent's going to spawn. He's already on it. He's seen this player before this player even knows what he's going to do. And this is what you need in a bit of a team nade right there. Uh, but this is what you, this is why he's is doing so much better than other team is. He's always looking. He always knows where the opponent's going to spawn. Well, it just feels the respawn. He's just killed two players. He's going to straight away run to the car side of the map. He's going to, okay, he's going to stay here and block a spawn of blue. And then he's going to look towards the red spawn. Look at this. He already knows. He's walking up the ramp. He knows this player spawn red. There's actually been a split spawn going on right now, which is quite unfortunate. They're doing a fantastic job right now, our Dave's adopted son, of really dictating the game and really putting late bloomers under immense pressure off every single spawn. And it seems as though late bloomers have, haven't got the answer to it. They're, you know, they're playing very reactionary right now. Yeah, they're not. They, uh, it's very hard, obviously, they seem like they're on the back foot for majority of this game, but the second they get these, if they walk away from a trade, even if it's a 2v1 trade, or, you know, right, right here, right, they should walk away with two two kills and no death trade, at, you know, at the minimum, and Shiesty with some great shots right there and surviving again. See, this is the this is what's constantly happening. So you get that first kill and they're just not pushing the second player quick enough. This camo is about to be up. It looks like Sana has just grabbed that. Got to be frustrating as well, Jim. You know, you get a player down to no shields, of course, you die. You then call out to the player that he's, he's one shot front base. It's an easy kill. And then somehow Shice, you know, scampers away and stays alive. And that's happening time after time. Only your frustration only growing then as well as camouflage in the chest of San Art looking to do some business. Yeah. And uh, doubles is all about winning those, you know, finishing off those one shots and making sure you capitalize on those kind of kills. And San Art right here just needs to survive. His teammates died. Yes, he has a one-shot bomb in the attic, which he's well aware of, but he can try and sneak a back here with the camo, which looks like he has. He's isolated player. Undy's kind of been left by his teammates. They wanted to rotate, and he was still in the rotation. And now it's just gone from a 1v2 situation against San Art to now he's in a 2v1 situation with camo. And here's the now trap all alone in the bubble as Shiesty repays the favor from that team name, team nade that came before as he gets one back on his teammate, but ahead by six kills. Now that camouflage with you is pretty decent, you must, you must say. Oh yeah, definitely. Sanat definitely was using it, uh, being aggressive with it, but not shoot until he knew he got a kill. You know, just then he was in a 1v2 situation and he noticed that an opponent ran out to the blue bubble and one opponent was sat in the blue window and he just straight away went for the kill on the blue window because he knew he could get the kill and dip out and that's what really matters. And this is actually still quite a close game, even though it seems like from watching it, a lot of this is in favor of uh, Dave's adopted son, but like it's very still a very, very close game with a lot of trades. So it's definitely good to see. Late Bloomers down by five. Sanart isolated in the bubble down to no shields. That's the first 1v1, I believe, I've seen Sanart lose. And he was, of course, not the favorite to win the fight anyway. But we've seen him do it consistently in this series that I almost banked on him doing it once again. As Undy Tonza fires a couple of shots towards P-side. Both members of Dave's adopted son positioned in P2. And Sanart gets another double kill. And that will mean another camouflage. He sits down here and waits for it as we see late late bloomers come off the respawn once again in red this time around and trying to contest that camouflage with Sanart playing out of his skin. Yeah, I'd like to have seen uh, Andy Tonza go and get a different angle in that situation. I built Andy Tonza on the window. He went out and just pushed the same position as his teammate and didn't really, uh, you know, get a different angle and push that together. And it seems like it was just a common thing where uh, the boys in late bloomers were just stood in the same spot. Yes, they were double shooting the, their opponent, but they were just stood in the same spot. And it's so easy to get flanked or isolated in that situation. They need to spread out, but also look at the same position, which they weren't doing. Ultimately, it means they lose the map. Talk me through the stats, Jim. Of course, Sanart playing really, really well. Shiesty in his particular role as being baited off there as we get confirmation 25 to 16 and 25 to 18 on Plaza and Truth, respectfully. But is there anything in the stats that maybe we can see Dave's adopted son push over to this next round? 
Uh, you know, Sanar seems like he's the main slayer for this roster. Like we said before, Sanar kind of is the guy that gets the kills while Shiesty seems like he's playing bait. Although I do believe Shiesty can go off and be that kind of carry player. But Sanar, like we said quite a few times in that series, is just not losing his 1v1s. I think we said we saw him lose one 1v1. That was towards the end of that last game right there throughout the whole series on both maps. So Sanar definitely is uh, popping off and he's probably the reason why they're this far through. Yeah, Dave's adopted son progressed to losers round three, but unfortunately, after three open cups and they've made themselves to the finals and placed top six, unfortunately, the bell now does toll for late bloomers as Undi Tonza and here's to now do, unfortunately, get eliminated as we take a look at the bracket and see how we got to this stage. We are now going to be pushing into losers round three. We see Dave's adopted son do progress, and of course, we've got missed it and Marine waiting in the losers round finals. But now Divine Mind have punched their ticket to losers round three. This is going to be for top three. So whoever wins this next series, Jim, is guaranteed some pounds. Yeah, and this is a repeat of the losers finals, I believe, from last week with Divine Mind versus Days of the Sun. And like you said, the winner of this next series gets the money. So, the, you know, this is another thing to play for. This is to guarantee the top three. Both teams are now in top four. So this next series is going to be awesome. Yep, you win this next series, you guarantee yourself at very minimum £40. Of course, second place, £60. And first place will be for £120 sterling. Not a bad chunk of change for some doubles action on a Sunday evening. Jim, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be back very shortly when we get the next lobby all lined up. Don't go anywhere. See you soon.